You might want to imagine that had you lived under the famously oppressive regimes of the past, under Mao, Stalin, Hitler, Mussolini, and so on, that you would have been among the resistance, that you would have been on the side of truth, justice, and freedom. But statistically speaking, that's probably not true. Had you lived in those places in those times, it's quite likely that along with a majority of your neighbors, you would have been proudly and loudly supporting and enthusiastically cheering for those oppressive authoritarian regimes. Now, you might disagree. Not you. You would have been virtuous, brave, and principled, right? Well, keep in mind, those oppressive regimes didn't just declare one day that they would be terrorizing, torturing, and murdering innocent people. Quite the opposite. Even the most vicious tyrants claimed that what they did was for the common good, was necessary for law and order, and to protect the people. And many believed it. Real-world tyrants aren't comic book villains. Most people don't even recognize them as tyrants until it's too late. Those historical tyrants, they were all cheered on by huge numbers of people, well-intentioned people who saw themselves as the good guys and saw the disobedient scofflaws and rebels as the bad guys and deserving of whatever punishment the state might impose upon them. Dictators and tyrants, before they crack down on dissidents and resistors, always need to portray the disobedient as selfish criminals, as enemies of the people, as a threat to society. Meanwhile, the loyal, obedient subjects are told that they are the virtuous, intelligent, caring, and compassionate ones, the ones nobly sacrificing for the common good, being responsible, upstanding citizens by going along with whatever the political ruling class tells them to do. The masses have always been told by officials and experts of the state that a very real danger was threatening their country, their people, their way of life, their very existence. And they were told that the only solution was more authoritarian control. And they were told that any who doubted such fear-mongering or didn't approve of the authoritarian solution were just ignorant, uncaring, mentally unstable, or worse, that the disobedient were trying to harm the decent, good, law-abiding citizens. To get away with doing what they do, tyrants need their adoring masses to condemn and hate the disobedient, condemning the motives of any who don't fall in line. The resistors are always painted by the state as greedy and ignorant malcontents who don't care about others, don't care about their country, only care about themselves, endangering everyone else with their disobedience and rabble-rousing. Those in power can't have the masses even considering the possibility that the people disobeying and resisting also have good intentions and good reason for disobeying, that they care just as much, that they too are trying to do the right thing. No, the dissidents always have to be portrayed as stupid, irresponsible, or downright evil. The tyrants can never let dissenters be seen as good people with just an honest difference of opinion. So to avoid that, those in power go to great lengths to vilify, censor, and silence any and all opposing opinions. So the masses don't ever hear why those other people believe and behave differently. Because if the people were exposed to competing ideas, they might change their minds.